Hi guys, to the question how to replace a capacitor, we are going to talk today about big, large capacitance examples. And those are the rules. Number one, the capacitance. You must replace a capacitor with the same capacitance than the old one. So make sure about it. Number two, voltage. You have to replace the same amount of voltage. Sometimes we cannot find it and we can replace the capacitor with other with a little bit more, more voltage and it will not hurt anybody. You can do it. But do not abuse of that. We will talk about it in another video. Next one, temperature. Temperature is very important. Some capacitors, they are made for 85 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Celsius. You can replace the 85 one with 105, but you should not replace the 105 with the 85. Just take care of that rule. Next one is the mechanical shape. It's very important. Sometimes we don't care about it and it's not the first time we order a capacitor after waiting for the delivery or we have to go to another city to buy it or take a trip to the shop. We come back and we realize that capacitor doesn't fit. Mm. Why? Because maybe it is too tall and is reaching the top or maybe it is too fat and there is no room for it. So take care of the mechanical shape of the capacitor. Number five, probably you didn't pay attention to it. The specific serial resistor. That's very important. If your capacitor is in the output of one audio amplifier, you have to take care of it. If your capacitor was in the last stage of a switching power supply, it's very important to take care of it. So do not forget, maybe you have to get the data sheet and check for the specific signal resistor. We can play a little bit with capacitors in this way. We can use them in serial or we can use them in parallel. That means if it is in serial, I can place two capacitors and the value of it is the equivalent value of the capacitors. There is a formula for it. Easy. If the capacitors, they have the same value, the equivalent value is the capacitance divided by two. That's a trick. Next one. If the capacitors, they are in parallel, it's very easy. Just add the values, period. Next one, the hard one. There are capacitors use it in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Non-polar capacitor, bipolar capacitor. This kind of capacitor is hard to find in the local market. Sometimes we have to order it. Sometimes it's very expensive to order just one capacitor and we need it. So we can make this capacitor. How to make this capacitor? It's very simple. Do you remember, we can use capacitors in serial and they will take the equivalent value? Okay, we will use that trick. But here is the rule, the voltage. Something to take care about. Bipolar capacitors will not have the same voltage than the voltage from the capacitors we are going to make. And I will tell you why. Audio amplifiers, most of them, they are specified in voltage RMS. And capacitors, pay attention, they will see the voltage peak to peak. Got it? Okay. If I'm going to replace a capacitor, non-polar capacitor, bipolar capacitor with electrolytic capacitors, Let's remember electrolytic capacitors, they are made for voltage peak. So what I have to do is to make the conversion to voltage peak to peak. Here is the formula. 
Now, I'm totally sure I can use two capacitors together, get the equivalent value of that capacitance, and I can also cal make calculations for the voltage peak to peak. But how to connect them? Here is the trick. Connect them in the opposite direction. That means they should go like that in polarity or like this in polarity, but do not do this because I will keep an electrolytic capacitor and what I have to do is a bipolar capacitor. Okay, easy and simple. Now you know how to replace a capacitor, how to play with it, how to get substitutions for it. If the video was good for you, please do not forget to give us a like. And if it's worthy, don't forget to subscribe. You will get more videos about electronics, basic electronics or engineering stuff. See you next time.